be alive. <laughs> I know. All right, well, welcome uh, to the August meetup for the Adelaide Microsoft IT Pro Community User Group. Um, it's been a very quick turnaround since our last meetup. Um, so not much news, uh, it's a slow week. Um, we've got Matt Klein on for his uh, second stint. Um, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll see, we'll hear more from him next month when he does his debut presentation. Um, speaking of uh, the user group, it, uh, lost focus, sorry. <laughs> It is my second year. Congratulations. Bit difficult with um, not being in person. Um, so we've missed out on some of the fun pizza and giveaways and just seeing seeing each other in person. Um, we did farewell with Adam last, uh, last month. Um, so we've got Matt to kind of fill some shoes. Some uh, very heavy shoes to fill there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, just do a bit to acknowledge the original custodians of the land, the kind of people uh, and the heritage. I've yet to get the proper wording, so we'll keep borrowing the TPC's uh, statement. Uh, important dates coming up, or, or past rather, uh, we've got Skype for Business Online, uh, end of life was reached end of July, so if you're still using Skype for Business um, on-prem, you're fine, uh, but online you, you're going to start moving to, well, you should have already migrated to Teams by now, um, just to keep that kicking along. Uh, Internet Explorer, no longer being supported by Microsoft 365 apps and services in a week. Uh, oh, that's a real shame. I bet, I bet there's a shame. lot of really upset people at Microsoft. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd yeah. say that's going to be about as popular as when Windows 8 get, it goes out of mainstream support or extended <laughs> support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so make sure you move over to Microsoft Edge. Uh, yeah, I know SharePoint will probably want to still open an explorer so move over to syncing your libraries with OneDrive sync client that kind of stuff um, there's going to be a lot of busy people in the next month or so <laughs> um, I'll throw a link in the chat later for just all the upcoming uh, services applications uh, operating systems that are coming out of support or ending of life this year So I did touch on some new certifications last month. Um, I didn't have proper names for them. So you've got the Team Support Engineer Associate, which is the MS740. Uh, turns out during Inspire, they did, they did uh, announce softly that there's going to be a new, another new Teams uh, exam. Um, it'll be the Teams Voice Engineer certification. Uh, there's no name for the exam just yet. So I, I did see they were doing a survey late June for to kind of questions and blueprinting for that one. So uh, with Skype for Business Online going away, obviously the next step is to replace the uh, the calling side of things. So that'll be a good one for those who are going to be needing a new certificate. Um, the other one was the Azure Network Engineer. So. It's a very, very tough beast, that one. Um, just getting your, your security sorted out in the cloud. So learning resources, but the cloud skills challenge. Uh, so that's 30 days to do a learning path that's been curated by the development team. Um, there's about 10 different uh, certifications to choose from between um, like power, Power Platform, uh, Azure Solutions Architecture, and just other dev related things. So once you complete that learning path, you get a 50% off voucher. So you can book in an exam at your leisure, uh, one every six months. So don't get too greedy. Um, for the Microsoft partners in the call, uh, they've actually got a certification week coming up uh, a couple of weeks' time. So you'll get to join in a Teams uh, team 
uh, be a guest in the team and then tune into some study groups, uh, more research uh, resources and cram groups for uh, an exam. So expectation that you've already been kind of using this product or studying towards a specific exam. Um, there's a list of about 15, 20 exams to pick from. Uh, and you'll get a free exam out of it um, to be booked within a month after the week. Always there's micro training, virtual training days. Um, this will cover all your fundamentals and uh, just more niche sections like um, AI, data that aren't in the, the mainstream parts of Azure and Micro 365. Uh, we touched on the certification renewal assessment. I uh, just did one recently and blogged about it. Uh, Fairly easy process. Um, so you'll be sent an email saying your certification X is expiring in six months. Um, please do a thing, otherwise it will it will expire and you have to reset the exam. So what you're gonna do is just head to your learning profile or Microsoft Learn from the link, and then um, it will check whether you're eligible for a renewal. You just gotta click the button, and then you get presented with. Uh, I got 20 questions, you may get 30. Uh, it's randomized, um, so it is open book. Um, it's best interest to go through the learning paths again, just to get familiar and re-familiarize um, with anything that's changed. Uh, and once you finish those questions and get a good amount of them correct, um, you'll, you'll get uh, your certification um, extended for another year from the original expiry date. Um, and if you've not if you've not used some of those virtual training days in the past or any of those sorts of things, you know, do take advantage of them. They're really, really useful uh, depending on your learning style and, and how you like to uh, consume information. It's sometimes best to, you know, to have something described in a different way um, that you're not used to. And yeah, sometimes that can really help sink in. So do use these resources for sure. Yeah. yeah and those MS Learn courses are now very good. Like, I, I mean, I remember back mm. in the bad old days, um, <laughs> you'd kind of read the book seven times and, you know, and go on to do a CBT something or other. Um, but now the, the the Microsoft Learn ones are, you know, on par with the, the, the commercial products in, in most aspects. Like they're actually really, really good. So mm. whoever's, whoever's knocking that stuff together, um, there's also quite a few GitHub repos of like training stuff for each of the um uh a lot of the certs as well like i know i'm studying for the ms 500 the 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 security one and there's a ton of stuff there for labs and all that sort of stuff in in just github repos as well really good there's a lot of stuff out there for free if you're, you're looking to do some exams it's worth it for sure yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's come a long way uh i got started off as the virtual academy yeah um and then bits of edx were Turn into the open edx and then they've just taken that content and just kind of smushed in uh, i think they're going open open source or whatever you call it um has helped a lot with documentation side of things so they just grab it out of there and make it a very uh effective um process hmm. um Oh, yeah, we'll give you the link to the uh, the latest um, certification poster. So see all the the five stacks I think it is now. So Azure, M365, Power Platform, um, Security, and then um, the relevant um, exams to get to fulfill those certifications. Um, so what's next? We've got Matt Klein himself doing a presentation on Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Uh, so I don't think we've done or covered much uh, in that space yet, so that'll be a good one to come along to. Uh, oh, so that means the bar's nice and low. I don't have to, don't have to, <laughs> like the expectations if we haven't done it before. That's excellent. I love that. That's fantastic. <laughs> we didn't want you to jump high, too high, Matt. It's all good. <sighs> well, <laughs> good thing for you that, well, these knees aren't made for jumping anymore, buddy. <laughs> After no, 35, they just went nuts. Not yeah. Doing that anymore. yeah, I woke up this morning and both my knees were shot. So uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see. It'll be good to get some more of these sort of endpoint stuff um, brought into that as well. And we're looking to get um, I'm looking to be able to do some ones around um, uh, Intune, uh, those sorts of things. Lots of people moving um, to, to Intune um, and that hybrid approach with 
the old config manager, um, which is now called Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Endpoint Manager. Endpoint Configuration Manager, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Like that. Uh, SCCM. It's always been SCCM. It always should be SCCM. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll try and get a bit more of that going. So this is, I think this is a really good one um, to sort of kick off a, a bit more of that endpoint um, stuff. For sure. Looking forward to it. All right. Well, we've got a special guest with us today. Uh, it's Mark Cashman himself. Uh, I'll let him do the, <laughs> the introductions. <laughs> I was just thinking of all the conversations about the bad knees. Maybe it's the Microsoft <laughs> end joint manager and everybody's joints Oy. are freaking. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm just going to switch over and you can tell me when yep. you can see things and and uh, hopefully it's coming through and I'll, I won't keep it like this for too long, but just to put a face to a name. Uh, it's really nice to come uh, and be a part of your user group and meet up and uh, switch into some topics maybe that you haven't covered. You've probably heard of all of these things, but we'll try to put it into context with some of the new experiences in Microsoft Teams and capabilities. Obviously, if you're uh, not fully aware of what Microsoft Viva is, where it fits in and how it supports this uh, improvement to what we're offering around employee experiences. Uh, and I am a co-host on a, a podcast called The Intro Zone, so we tag that on and we'll have some fun with Matthew and Brett and Andrew and actually pull them into the intro zone at the end so you can hear more from them. This will be not just me presenting, this will be also them towards the end. Uh, but Andrew, thanks for the invitation uh, to join in. And uh, again, hopefully you can see what I'm seeing. And uh, got a few slides to go through, uh, a lot of demo, and any q and I think with this size of a user group and connections, if there's any time, I'll kind of pause purposely at two or three points. Uh, but if there's anything that I mentioned that doesn't make sense or, or you have a follow-up question, put it into the chat or, or interrupt or ping Andrew or anybody to make sure that we get that addressed. Um, but I am Mark Cashman. I'm on the SharePoint marketing team, but I work a lot with the different engineering teams here that support and promote what Viva is, working with Microsoft Teams. I think we all do that these days. Uh, and certainly the SharePoint contribution is the back end to a lot of these new front end experiences. I hope that will be really clear as we get to the end. So uh, thank you for inviting me and uh, we'll jump right in. So the little contextual setting, primarily what I'm going to be talking about, uh, if it isn't clear in a uh, direction that Microsoft is going, is a lot has moved to the cloud, but not everything. But a lot of these experiences, at least where the end user is going to be entering, is going to be Microsoft 365. And the one point of clarity is I'm also talking about Office 365 as a subset to that. Primarily where all of these apps and services are is Office 365 packaged up into Microsoft 365. And our goal is to make it so that no matter where you are, whether you are currently working from home, as we all are uh, to some degree these days more than, than in the past, uh, if that's a permanent zone for you, if it's temporary, or if it's just a place that you work from, we want that to be an equal experience for both you in the end user experience, but also from an IT perspective to be able to manage all of that um, and to give you the best of both worlds, whether you're at home, whether you're on the go, or if you do have an office and you are going to be returning there or you've been already there uh, in this pandemic before or after, we want Microsoft 365 to be a service that you can access no matter where you're at. Uh, and have it be a really good one, uh, especially when you start thinking about moving to hybrid. Um, I've got one hybrid question specific when we get to the end towards the intro zone, more technical. This is really looking at hybrid from the realities that either we all have just recently been exposed to, or in the natural way of working, you may just have been moving closer and closer to whatever it is you might have termed this in the past, digital transformation, modern workplace, or just adopting new tools and techniques. Um, but we do see a split in terms of how people work together. So collaboration, teamwork, being able to do that with fewer contextual switches between applications, but of course layering in a lot of different people that you work with and of course uh, the different types of content that you work on. We all work on lots of different types of content. It might be a document, we might be in meetings, or we might be turning to just managing information, um, but we oftentimes turn to work with our peers, automate as much as we can, especially those repeatable processes we do all the time, 
having back-end systems that are doing some of that logic discovery for you, or at least tagging and, and uh, doing your content management uh, at scale with a lot more ease. And that it's a more inclusive. Um, some of it that is based on devices, some of it's based on operating systems, but also based on location and how you interact with each other so that there are fewer barriers. Uh, and when it comes to that right-hand side, at least on this slide, is really looking at kind of the one-to-many. When you turn to either work with a broader set of people, your assets are more finished, you're ready to release them to more eyeballs. Uh, that notion of being able to have it be a two-way street so that you can both work on something, but once it's finished, you can then get feedback, refine it, publish it, make sure that everybody has visibility to it. Um, the other thing that we've found, not necessarily just in the pandemic, but it's become a lot more pertinent in, in how people are engaging in their work with others and working from home or just working more. Uh, if anything, sometimes it feels like you're missing out or on your commute, and that's a good thing. But at the same time, filling that space if expectations have gone up or you've just gotten the new habits that are causing you to maybe at some point get benefits to, to reflect on that and to really assess your well-being. Uh, and it's not something you've ever done. It's something that I'm relatively new to as well. But just being reminded when to take a break, maybe being encouraged to uh, take time away from the PC or Mac, <clears throat> but also the notion of well-being in terms of actually taking a moment to meditate or at least reflect on what it is that you're doing. It's really interesting to see that through tools and technology, but also people management and having people who are aware of maybe the burnout that you're feeling and then having proactive things that you can actually go and do about that. That might be just turning to your attention that away from work and maybe skill building, learning some new tips and tricks. Uh, like you had mentioned, a lot of those certifications through Microsoft Learn, having some of those lighter weight training materials a little bit closer to home. If you're doing something like a certification, you're going to probably do a lot of research and uh, uh, um, uh, just refining what it is that the test is going to test you on. But then if you turn to things that are just going to be helpful, a one hour training here, 30 minutes there, finding that and actually being able to uh, do that in your in your uh, work day is pretty important, different than maybe going to Microsoft Learn and getting certified. Um, but everything we do in this space is certainly based on trust, based on a very secure location, and we're very mindful with what we are stewards of your data. You own the data, but certainly you tr put that trust in the Microsoft Cloud. Um, boiling it down, these, these uh, areas where people are interacting with each other, storing content and, and uh, getting a lot of feedback about their day is oftentimes these days more Microsoft Teams than it has ever been. And we say that lightly because we're not expecting that your entire world is now in Microsoft Teams. Although for the next half hour, I've got you contained within Teams so we can get away with a little bit more. But we realize it's not the only tool, but it's a place where we're putting in a lot of emphasis to try to improve the experience of how people work together and the notion of how they connect via Teams meetings, broader all hands events if you're doing it across the company, but then really boiling down to how you access and collaborate around a variety of content. Some of that experience is now being driven specifically to employees to improve the various things that they are doing. And we see this through research. We see this through what people were building on top of it as a platform by default anyway. Uh, some of them might have been a learning management training portal. Some of it might have been a place to have better content management and a better way to tag content. Some of it might just have been a better, broader, more uh, inclusive type intranet portal, but bringing that closer to home and all the while having the insights of what are you doing every day and, and maybe a couple of tips on how you could do things differently. So holistically, we're trying to bring these together uh, by nature of you being here on this uh, user group and interested in what Microsoft is doing, not Microsoft alone, but certainly in the context of if you're leveraging Office 365, Microsoft Teams. I really hope to uh, get you at the end of this session more familiar with what are some of the new things that you can try today or at least take advantage of because you probably have access to it if you're an Office 365 customer. So I won't spend too much time on Teams. Uh, I think it's a pretty pervasive technology, whether you're still Zooming, you're WhatsApp chatting, you're doing whatever it is around video. Boil that into how you can communicate in a, a more transitional or uh, even something that's more of a long-term type conversation. 
a lot of the conversations that we see are those things that persist and not just the conversation, but the association to content and having that related to things like today that are getting recorded and being able to bundle that to especially the new person who joins the team or when you need to go back and look up something. There's a lot of ways to connect. There's a lot of ways to associate that to content, but having that be a better way for people to connect, whether it's during the pandemic or two years from now, we hope that these tools help you stay connected, especially when you are not the one in the room because we want that to be a great new experience, uh, especially one that is persistent. Um, the new kit on the block is Microsoft Viva, and I'll take a pause just after this before I click into the next uh, and last couple of slides before demo. But just to give you a sense of what Microsoft Viva is, there is a very large industry play to just do better by the employee. And this is from top down, bottoms up, better ways for people to collaborate, better ways for people to connect, and better ways to disseminate information so that nobody misses important news, nobody feels left out if they have an important thing to say or to join the conversation. And then of course, a lot of learnings along the way to improve your skills and maybe even get a, a, a different way of how you might spend your day. If you're spending it too much email, too many meetings, there's a notion of letting you know about that and then having some ideas about what to do about it. So we break it down into four modules, but a lot of them are just uh, consistent experiences that you can turn to in teams. And I'll go through these and demo a little bit more uh, intact, but think in terms of Microsoft Viva Connections is bringing your internet into teams so that you have one app for your calendar, one app for your chat, and then you can quickly navigate right into the news and information from across your organization. And having that both mobile and uh, uh, through the web or at your desktop, however you're using Microsoft Teams, we want that information to flow where you're at. With Insights, it's really, uh, I think, the most telling in terms of its name is it really is to give you insights into what you're doing every day, to remind you of things that you might have missed, and to give you an encapsulation of what you might be doing too much of. Um, but I think they've been doing some really nice work to bring that forward. Uh, into what it is today and certainly getting ready to deliver that at, at general availability in the fall. Um, with topics, it's very much if you have a history of content management, it helps you take that into where people are working. And I'll show you a couple examples that I have um, that I've benefited from by having topics turned on and how it is then I hope that it's helping my readers or my viewers of people that are consuming my content internally. And with learning, again, pretty straightforward. It is a way to help you improve your skills and to do that uh, on things that you might be required to do. So you might be having training pushed down towards you, or you might just need to skill up and learn something new, uh, especially after today. If you want to learn more about any of these topics, guaranteed there's some form of training that you can access either through the normal uh, front door that you've already built, or if you're starting to review what, what Viva Learning brings, you can go and, and look for some training. But the last bit here I want to be real clear on, it is a platform that's built on technology that you've already been using, most likely if you're an Office 365 customer. There's an underpinning of SharePoint. There's an underpinning, of course, of Teams holistically. And anything around Microsoft 365, if you're thinking about true customization, to be able to extend these experiences or bring in some new cards or, or new uh, tasks and whatnot, to be able to have those flow in that meets the management of your business needs, uh, that that is something then you can certainly think of this as an open platform. As much as Microsoft 365 and Teams are platforms, that is where this new employee experience platform lives. And our intent is to not just be Microsoft centric. It certainly is connected to a lot of different apps and services throughout Microsoft 365, but it does go beyond that. We've got a wonderful set of partners in this space across all the modules. Uh, and if you're interested to learn more about them, I've got a great place to go. But in this new digital era, we know that there is this uh, greater reach of how customers and companies are moving to be uh, multi-regional, multilingual, sometimes often uh, multi-geographic, and bringing people together to at least stay connected uh, is the intent of Viva on top of, again, existing in, uh, investments. So before I get into just a little capper on Microsoft Lists and where it fits in, I want to take a pause. It's a, a lot in terms of just kind of some upfront inf information about Microsoft 365, Office 365, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Viva. I haven't gotten to the oh my part just yet. 
Um, but I will pause here just because I want to make sure if you have any early questions, uh, early feedback, if anybody's willing to come off of mute and share, uh, I want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, Andrew, are you seeing anything in chat or just any raised hands or again, coming off of mute and just, just Nothing joining yet. Okay. Well, please uh, raise your hand before I turn to demo in just about a couple of minutes. Just a, a little trigger. If you ha do have a question, raise your hand uh, in Teams. There's the little raise your hand feature, uh, and we'll make sure to make sure that there's no question unanswered. Um, but similar how Microsoft Viva is relatively new, Microsoft List is a new offering as its own app but it has its roots in SharePoint. So SharePoint lists, if you've ever used SharePoint from a team site perspective or a communication site perspective, one of the main components of the site is the ability to create a list or to be able to create thousands of lists. Um, and we've really brought forward the SharePoint list and evolved it into Microsoft lists, giving it its new app entry point. So we have the Microsoft list homepage. We've got an experience in Teams to be able to create, manage, and use, and work with lists. And we have a new mobile app and, of course, a, a new uh, kind of entirely rebuilt user interface. With is really our intent is to make them simple. Uh, we know that from our research and use in the past of SharePoint lists, where we've seen people sort of fall off very quickly, is as they need more than what you can get out of the box, the uh, complexities of working with lists in the past is something we put a lot of, of research to understand where are people getting lost? What are things that people are wanting to accomplish, but it's maybe too hard to do? And just simplifying it across the board uh, by nature of these new entry points, the whole nature of making a mobile application that was easy enough where you could do everything on the mobile application. Uh, we put a lot of effort into that simplicity, but not to move away from the power that comes with Microsoft List, which is that they're smart. These are things that you can program very easily with just a few clicks. You can design them. You can make them look and feel in the way that's best way to describe your information, and you can tie it into some forms of flexibility that might just be a rule that helps you notify the right people at the right time, or truly connecting in with something more powerful like the Power Platform, where we've got really deep integrations with Power Automate, Power Apps, and Power BI. Uh, so if that's the new kid on the block, or if you haven't used Microsoft List beyond maybe a SharePoint list that you still have, uh, there's a lot that you should explore, and I'll certainly try to show you kind of the 101 to give you a sense of what is Microsoft List today. So um, Mark, on, yeah. on lists, um, yeah. <clears throat> is that pulling the information from your existing SharePoint list? So say I've got a, a a lot of lists in SharePoint, I can they'll, they'll be exposed straight into the the new platform, will they? That's correct. Yeah, there and, is. And no... new ones will go through into there as well. So I start creating it in the new lists app, whether it be on mobile or or wherever else, and they'll just go into the the relevant um, SharePoint repository as well. I'm guessing. Yeah, you got it. I'll show you an example. When I create a list, I can create a list and choose where do I want that list to get created, but I'm actually creating it from the new list home, so I'm not really in the site yet. But if I had an existing list, and I've got one that I have created about five years ago, and at the time there was no Microsoft Teams, so I had a team site with a list, pretty simple. Uh, when Microsoft Teams had the opportunity to kind of join forces so you could teamify a site, effectively having a Microsoft 365 group with a team site, a team, a planner plan, I did that with this same site, so I would was then able to bring in my list inside of Teams. And then Microsoft List launched, and that list did show up on my list home because it is a list. It doesn't matter where or when it was created. And now that it's in and, it, and it's gotten kind of an update, but without me having to do anything, I can visualize that through Teams as a tab. I can access it directly through the SharePoint site. I can see it if I'm not technically an Apple user uh, in the context of iPhone, but I could. Uh, we're working on an Android phone, so I'm waiting for that. Um, but the list is just a list on the back end in SharePoint, and it hasn't changed from the if you have now Microsoft list or you're using it, an existing list will come through. I can create a list to an existing SharePoint site, or I could completely create a new group today within a minute and create a new list from within inside Teams and never leave Teams, but technically it would be stored in SharePoint still. Uh, so a visual to that is when I'm working inside of Teams, and I'll show you this really just as, as the next couple set of demos, 
But just to be real clear, we've had the ability to bring in an existing list as a tab for a while, and this really brings it to not only being more functional and simple, but it also brings it so where you can actually create inside of Teams. Again, stored on sh in SharePoint, but the end user, whoever created it, whoever interacts with the list or an individual list item, is always within Teams if that's how you prefer. And there's a lot of things you can do with lists. I'll go through all of that. Um, but to be real clear, we've got a really nice new lists app in Teams. It's just a window into that SharePoint backend store. Um, so with that, I certainly if there were any questions that popped up, just stop me as I switch over uh, just to show a few things. Um, it was sorry that Mark, there oh, was yeah. one question um, which was um, and I think this is when you were going through that the early Viva modules. It was um, yep. is there any guidance around pricing for each of the module modules? Yeah, uh, there is. I won't be the expert on the exact amounts and certainly they would translate a little bit differently into the Australian dollar, but there is pricing available for uh, topics, which is a for purchase service. Right now, uh, the two that are actually in general availability are Topics, uh, Viva Topics, and Viva Connections. Viva Connections currently in the instance where you would do what I'm about to show you, which is in the upper left here, uh, you would effectively have your company portal in as an app in Teams. To configure it all really mostly requires SharePoint and then a little PowerShell to actually get it to show up in Teams. But that component right now is generally available, but it does not have a cost to it. Um, the other two modules, Learning and Insights, uh, I believe will have a cost to them. Uh, and those are now currently either in private preview or public preview with the intent to go general availability later this fall, which for you I know is after uh, you know the September timeframe, somewhere around there. So uh, there is pricing. I believe we've announced uh, the topics uh, licensing. Uh, and off the top of my head, I believe it's $5 per user. Uh, but but you know I will uh, put a resource in once I stop talking I can drop in that information. But uh, just two things to remember: uh, we are at GA for topics and connections, and we are in preview for learning and insights. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. So um, where I'm going to start? I'm just going to kind of navigate through just the different experiences. This is real me signed into Teams. So just so you know, the UI is there's not a slide. Uh, but I am in Teams. I'm signed in as Mark through the Microsoft tenant uh, and obviously sharing it through Teams. So hopefully it looks okay in your end. So it's Teams within Teams, but uh, that's where a lot of the Viva experience is. Uh, and it's a lot of where now our list experience is. So uh, without delay, what you're looking at here is Viva Learning. If you try this today, you have an active uh, Microsoft Teams license and you're in in Microsoft 365 or you start up a trial account, you can try all this today. This is technically in production, just still in preview where we haven't released it from a support perspective. But I'm in Viva Learning and you can see that at Microsoft we have it set up where I can see things that are trending. Some of this is coming in from LinkedIn Learning, not just because we acquired LinkedIn, but if you have a LinkedIn Learning subscription, there's some base training that's available through the app no matter what. But then if you have a LinkedIn Learning subscription for your company, that would come through. So you're seeing a lot of the trending here at Microsoft coming from LinkedIn Learning. But as I scroll down the page, either things that I've recently viewed or things that are coming from the different services, this is now only LinkedIn Learning. This is coming through Microsoft Learn. You heard that referenced earlier. These are uh, free courses essentially that we can plumb in by making this decision of what training do I want to see through Viva Learning? And then you select which sources. And then this last one is actually available to everybody, but you first need to deploy it. Uh, and it's, it's called Microsoft Learning Pathways. It effectively is a unique SharePoint site that pulls content in from Azure that Microsoft manages, but it's available to everybody and the focus is to get you trained up on Office 365 or Microsoft 365 applications. So at Microsoft, me as an employee, I have access to three types of learning systems, but they all come through this unique interface. So if I wanted to go in and look up something that we're gonna be talking about, we'll type in lists. I can do a simple search. There is a Microsoft list course in LinkedIn and I click into it. You can see the interface brings me to read a little bit more about it to actually start the training right here in line. It would play these modules. I haven't left Teams. Uh, sorry about the sign in. I'll do this really quickly. Uh, I won't do it really quickly because that'll take a second. Um, 
But effectively, I would be able to take the full course right here in Teams, and it's prompting me for my LinkedIn credentials, which uh, I certainly have. But uh, it is something that I can flag for later by bookmarking it. It's also something that I could recommend to somebody else. So I could add somebody's name and uh, Chris, who was going to be joining us today, but couldn't. I'm going to load him up with a couple of demos and he's going to have to be pulled in no matter what. Lists for life. How about that? Uh, and then I can recommend that to him. And so that'll go as a notification in Teams that will link him to this training. And it's an easy way for me to do that. As a peer, it's pretty straightforward. But if I go in to actually manage, I don't have a team here at Microsoft, so I don't have this view. But if there were something that either I had recommended to somebody else, I could see if they had uh, interacted with it. If I were their manager and I was going to say, I want everybody to take this training, I could at least do some lightweight tracking to see if they actually took that training. Um, the other place that it comes up, and I'll do this again with my friend Chris, is I can go in here and I can chat with Chris and you can see the different things that we're chatting about. But if you look at learning also has a component where the same way that I was recommending it, if I was talking to Chris and he asked me, you know, I, I need to learn a little bit more about your product, Microsoft Lists, I could use this little uh, chat app that goes in and effectively does the same thing. Now take a look and then a little demo. So when I post this down, same as he would get on any chat between he and I, he would now have this link to go in and click in, and it would take him to the Viva Learning module, which then effectively would take him to this, this uh, page that I was on uh, right into that Microsoft List training. So it's a great place to explore learning. It's a great place to recommend learning, and you can do it even in chat. And if you're a manager, you can even say, hey, I'd like it if everybody took this training course. Uh, take a look at it here. Uh, if we have any questions, we'll, we'll have a meeting about it uh, maybe in our next team meeting. Um, so that's learning, hopefully straightforward. You have a lot of opportunity to subscribe to multiple learning systems, some of which you might already be in more uh, already invested in. There are a lot of other partners that play into this space, and the more that you would effectively program to the end user, they would just see those as choices. So that's Viva Learning. If I go into Viva Insights, this is a place where you can get a lot of information, and as this renders, uh, you have this sense of being able to kind of give feedback. How are you feeling? Uh, so this might be something like a daily pulse that you might consider uh, at your company encouraging people to do. Because I'm talking across the country into the different hemisphere into Adelaide, I'm feeling very pleasant. And so that'll just take a note and kind of become within the fabric of how is the company doing? It takes that into consideration. It doesn't expose how I'm doing to other people. It just puts it into a metric that then people who are looking across the organization will get a more holistic view. So that's how that works. Um, but I can do a number of different things. I can provide kudos to a colleague, which is inclusive of their manager. I can take a moment and assess a meditation. If I'm uh, you know, kind of running low and I need a little bit of kind of headspace or feel back, we've got a lot of great interactions with headspace, but other partners here that are providing these card experiences. If I click into it, you'll see it's within Teams. I can go in, I can click into it, listen to this meditation, take a five minute break, but where I think it starts to get really interesting is it is also a place where to be reminded. So in the bottom left, I'm reminded I'm working with our podcast producer. She's got a new uh, little teaser video that we've created that I'm going to be tweeting out uh, probably later this week. And that's just something that she sent to me. So I'm getting a reminder that that's available to me. And we've had that over uh, email, but it's coming through here as a little teaser reminder for me to go and take some action on. The other thing that I think is really important is to be able to book focus time. And this is a really nice integration with your exchange calendar to where if I see this says tomorrow between 9 a.m. and 1030, I have a free chunk of time. And if I don't want people to actually take that from me or to book a meeting, I can just click book now and automatically I get a time reserved on my calendar that's actually then blocked off and visible to other people as focus time. And I then you can that. see... I use that a lot. Um, yeah. I, I, just, I really do encourage people that uh, you know if you if you do have really really stacked uh, with meetings and those sorts of things to be able to just take that focus time and just hey you know what I'm I'm offline. Um, you know it sets teams to you know you're away and do not disturb and all that sort of stuff and you can just really get hold of some of that stuff that you just can't get around to. So it's it is really really useful. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I it, couldn't agree with you more. And it, it literally is just that. I didn't go and click into my calendar and type in a thing to, to re, you know, to give it a title. It just one button reserves it. If you don't need it, you just right click and delete. Yeah. yeah it also also comes through in your, um, like depending on how you've got your, your mail set up, like Cortana briefings will actually, at the beginning of the week, before your week goes crazy busy, it'll send you the email <laughs> to say, hey. hey, look, book this for the week or for the yeah. fortnight coming up. And it'll, it'll even give you a like an update to say, hey, um, you know, you've booked five out of 10 days with focus time. And the other thing it would do as well that I found um, when I was using this a lot was, it would actually, if it couldn't find a continuous block of, say, two hours for focus time, it would split that up to two one-hour blocks in between meetings oh, nice. and stuff like that. So That's that cool. was, that. it's really, it, it does it well and it integrates across the whole collab stack really well. Like Brett said, mm. where it jumps you into focus mode, it turns on focus assist in yeah, Windows right, right. as well. Um, it blocks your IMs. People can't talk to you, which is just amazing. Because <laughs> <laughs> who wants customers to tell us? I was going to say, oh, I, I want that, I want that audio chunk where no right one can there. talk to you. That, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you'll what you're seeing here is kind of the way that these are cards that can be integrated into the experience. We've actually, you know, built this so that you can get a sense of what this app does is intended to bring this all together. Same as you're getting information, I put this to-do item in so that I could, you know, be reminded to prepare. And then, of course, for today. Uh, but I want to go in, and you can see kind of these actionable things. It's a little card because I put this as a to-do. I associate it to today's date. It's happening now, and I'm just going to click done. We're not done yet, but according to my to-do list, I'm now done with that item. Um, but the other two areas, and we'll get into like the protect time is what everybody's been talking about. The other area that I think is super useful, and it is kind of that, let me review this maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. Same that I just talked about, that social clip that Lisa had sent me. But I can see that across all of my chats and email based on what other people are, you know, either I've said to them or they're asking of me. Um, on the podcast, we're going to have a woman from the Power BI team. We're going to record with her. So I reached out to her and asked her, would you be interested to be a guest interview? And I already had heard back from her, and she's already said yes. But this is what that's based off of. It's that simple question in our interaction. And what it is to me is a reminder, follow up with a meeting invite so we can record on Teams. I know I've already done that, so I can click Done. And I can go through. And if there's anything that's super important, where I'm actually going to be on another episode talking with one of our HR leaders, I actually want to pin that so that I really make sure that I want to get that social clip out, and then I can click Done. And then I need to follow up with Kerry so I can get him scheduled on his calendar. But this stay connected is a really important way. It's similar to what you just heard described around the Cortana reminder email. It's just that, but it's really nicely toned into actually organizing or taking action. And if there's something in here that I can see that I don't need to really follow up on, like maybe this one, I can just exit out and now it's gone from my view. So this stay connected pivot really is based on who you're working with, the things that you're talking about and maybe reminders that can help you not forget things. And then just because we were talking about it, this is the book time and I'll go in and I'll book another one on Wednesday and then turn to the calendar and you can see those times that I've booked on, uh, let's see, tom tomorrow, here's my focus time, immediately on my calendar, immediately shows up as focus time uh, to other people if they're looking through my free busy and then if I don't need something, I can delete it and there's no harm, no foul. So that's Viva Insights. Moving on to Viva Connections, which uh, is truly something that you probably already have 75% deployed. And I'm just guessing that if you are on this call, the propensity to, to expect that you might already have a SharePoint-based intranet portal, that you may have made a SharePoint home site, you may have made it your root site in your SharePoint experience in Microsoft 365, and you may already have this new kind of homepage uh, modern look and feel with some of our modern technology in SharePoint. If even half of that is true, you're still well on your way to leveraging Viva Connections. If you do have it all in place, the last mile is something I, I barely can tell you how to do it because I'm not a PowerShell expert. But with the PowerShell script, you basically say, I want my SharePoint home site to have this logo and appear as an app on the left rail of Teams. After you run that script, you are now Viva Connections. Um, it still has your logo and branding. So for us, it's Microsoft Web. 
on the app, it's the Microsoft icon or logo because I work at Microsoft. It would be your logo here. And as I click into it, it has two actions. It either takes me to my home page and my experience of my portal inside Teams. And if I click it again, it gives me access to what we call the SharePoint app bar, which has included in it the global navigation. So this is configured by my IT team and by a robot on the back end, which is our friend AI that's actually looking through those same logistics of well, who does Mark work with? What is he interested in? What does he work on? And abstracts, obviously, any of the weird big, big brother notion that you might think of. But it really is just taking the Microsoft graph and personalizing my experience across different sites. So you can see my sites. These are the ones that I frequent and work in a lot. I can see my news. This is news that's coming from the top down. They kind of see it here. This is top down news for me at Microsoft, which is called Microsoft Web News. That's just what we call it. So it gets a tag and we call that organizational news as far as technology because these are specific sites that are meant to push out to everybody. And we have one main one, MSW, but you could have multiple organization news. But I'm also getting news from different sites that I belong to because I'm on the OneDrive and SharePoint team. That's how we've kind of been historically. I'm seeing news that's published at a, at a team level. It's a big team here at Microsoft, but it's not the whole company. So I'm getting a blend of this organizational news for everybody and news that's just for me because I fit this mold of either having access to this site or because it's targeted to me as an audience member of a specific role, a specific region. And those are all things that you can configure. But Viva Connections brings it all together because it brings this global navigation, which is this top part, to be able to navigate to things that everybody in the company should have. Or if I'm just going to the parent level and I'm reading the news, I'm scrolling the page, on the right-hand side you can see this pane of the, the spot that's been personalized to me. That's a component of SharePoint which we call the, the feed, the personalized feed. I can see Yammer conversations, not just generic any Yammer conversations, but of the communities that I'm invested in and active in. And I see Michael Holsty. He used to be my uh, on the same team. He's now on a different team. But it's an active space where you have good people experiences. You have great content. It comes in both internal and external based on how you want to program this page. And you can customize it. When I talked about this being a platform, at the bottom of Microsoft Web, we have what we call the Daily Pulse that actually takes into some of what I did when I said I'm, I'm very pleasant today, but they actually do send around a survey as well. And you just get a sense of how's the company feeling. But that's a, a unique custom application built on the SharePoint framework, but really exposed here to show me what is the Daily Pulse. Um, we also just are tracking uh, our stock so we can see that. And I can see here that they've even built a little glossary. It's a very simple uh, uh, application that our IT team built. And if I wanted to go in here and just uh, look up uh, Moss, I can see that Microsoft Opfer, uh, 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 Office SharePoint Server, if ever I were to reference that, I can do things like look up. And it's just a glossary of terms that we have on a backend list that then just it gets exposed like you see here. So I can, if I don't know what Moss stood for, and in this community, you probably could have guessed that was the uh, old acronym for an older version of SharePoint Server. But if I didn't know, it's a great place for me to go and ask. So this is just how our page has been designed. We're taking advantage of the mega menu at the top. You can see all of the different ways that the team has bucketed. And we have this new node for COVID resources that are internal and very much updated through a health check app if you're going to be on premises. And you get a sense that this is just our company portal. But the Viva Connections part brings the portal inside Teams. So to switch over to our last two demos, uh, I will switch out of Teams and switch into a browser that I had open earlier to show you Microsoft Viva Topics. And Topics comes through in the context of where you're working. Right now, it's enabled through SharePoint Pages and SharePoint News, but it'll be coming to uh, chat in Teams and within uh, Outlook email. So the same experience that I'm showing you, the part that if you ask yourself, what is Viva Topics? There's a little bit to configure. Obviously, it's a license component. But when you see things that look like they're highlighted, like Viva, uh, Microsoft Viva itself, down here you can see that I mentioned in my text, I just wrote out Microsoft 365. But anything that qualifies as a topic, 
and has been deemed and approved as a topic either bottom up if you allow that or top down if you have it more a managed knowledge base. But to give you a sense to kind of do a meta point to use Viva topics to learn about Microsoft Viva, I'll click into this. This is called a, a topics card. So I get a little sense of what is Viva topics. Here's a description, maybe some alternate names that you might come across. Two of our leaders that actually are on the engineering side, I can go and drill into who is Kirk, who is Chuck, learn more about who they are, who their organization is. And I'm actually directed to a lot of resources to learn more about uh, Microsoft Viva all up, the full suite. So if I click into the full details, this will take me into a part of my intranet that is a topic page all about Microsoft Viva. And this page is curated by the Viva team. There are different Viva modules, so you can start to break down similar to how I started the presentation with what is Viva. There is some video that they have here, which is my general manager, Seth, giving a, a conversation internal. So it's about a 20 minute video. Again, more about who are the people involved in Viva, who are the suggested people, suggested content, suggested sites. And where I start, I think to get, it gets really interesting is when you start to see the interconnections of what topis, Topics is actually doing. It's making connections from here, the Viva Suite, to actually go into the different modules and show me topic cards around Viva Learning, technology that's already been in place but is now a part of the Viva Insights, that's Workplace Analytics, Viva Connections I was just talking about, I can click in, I can view the details, I can get a drill down into those experts. And if I wanted to learn more about Andy, same as you can throughout Microsoft 365, I can learn about the people, I can learn about the content. It's public content in the context of I have permissions to view it because that's why I see it. If there's something that's related to this project or this team or term, and I don't have access to see it, I will not be exposed to it. But because this product is now launched and there's a lot of information internally to learn more about Viva Connections, uh, I can certainly do that. Um, one more click in will take me to what we call the Microsoft Topic Center. And the same as you saw me talking about Viva Connections and the SharePoint home site, this is extremely customizable. This is just the way that we've configured it. So if there are a topics overview, if I wanted to learn about topics in general, if I wanted to request a new topic, maybe I've got a new product or project that I'm starting, and I want to make sure that if people come across that in a SharePoint site, in their chats, in email, that they'll be able to learn about that. Or if they wanted to contribute and start to curate because they are an owner of a topic, that they can start to do that. Um, and you'll get a sense of the work that I do here at Microsoft. I often get involved in a variety of SharePoint Saturdays, so it was asking me if this is a suggested topic. MS List, which is just a short way of saying Microsoft List. I helped with the Mover acquisition, which is all about migrating content, so that's there. But anyway, this is uh, Viva Topics, and so holistically that was the whole Viva Suite. Um, and just another experience where the word SharePoint leads me to the SharePoint topic card. And you can see if you know who Jeff Teeper is, he in fact is the lead engineer for all of SharePoint and a lot more. Um, so last little bit, and then we're going to turn to some questions to our your leaders in the space in the user group. Um, but Microsoft Lists, uh, this is at, to the question earlier, a place for me to go and navigate to all of my existing or new lists. It's also a place for me to go in and create a new list. We've got a lot of great new templates. You can start from scratch, pull in from Excel. Just to give you a sense of what this looks like before I turn to really show you the experience in Teams, a lot of these different templates come with pre-configured columns, pre-configured look and feel, and you can manage through and decide which one's going to work for me based on the type of information that I want to track and manage. But the same experience, same capabilities comes through here in Teams and through mobile. Uh, so let me switch over to back to Teams, if I can find it. Uh, Where did it go? Here it is. And we'll move off and just look into one of my teams uh, that's about what we're going to talk about next, the IntraZone. So this is a, a list that I manage about the shows that are upcoming. I'm going to expand this so you can see a little bit more space, this list. But back through time, you can see all the different episodes that we've published. Uh, and of course, I can use this to search and find and add new and collaborate with my my peers. But uh, the one that we've got coming out tomorrow, just as a little preview, uh, is all around GitHub. So we had a number of uh, people that we worked with. I can see this list item individually in here. And if I want, I'll bug my friend Chris one more time. I can actually reach out to Chris and ask him.
uh, are you ready to make some noise about GitHub? So he'll get this as a chat that's associated with this list item. And in his chat, he would actually be able to click on to uh, that and certainly uh, be able to come back to it. And you can see here uh, in our chat, uh, sorry, in that team, what that looks like within the chat uh, starts off a new thread with Chris to be able to then pull his attention into that uh, that information. Um, so last little bit uh, in terms of demo, and I, I uh, certainly will turn to kind of the intro zone next, uh, is you have the ability to create a list from within inside teams. And I'm in a team right now because I created a team space for the intro zone. And so if I need to, I can go and create a new list or to the question earlier, I can add or bring in an existing list, even if it's been around for years, I can add that existing list that's now been associated from a team site connected to teams. But to show you that user interface, the same user interface to create from within teams, the same notion of being able to pick from a template like asset manager, get a sense of what that brings in and then be able to apply that. So uh, we'll call this one Adelaide manager and we'll choose green and maybe a rocket ship so I can get over to Australia faster. And when I click create, this is now creating a new list in the SharePoint team site visualized as a tab in teams right directly within the teams interface. And it's blank because obviously there's not a lot there, but if I go in and I add elements, uh, I will certainly uh, be able to fill out this information and uh, voila, I've got a really nice list that I'm building directly inside of teams. Um, so with that, uh, apologies for my inability to track time, uh, but I do want to jump into and uh, jump into uh, the interzone, and I'll skip pitching you what the interzone is, and we'll get right into talking with Brett, Matt, and Andrew. Before I just barge on in here, I just want to double check with Andrew. Uh, Timing-wise, if we went five minutes over, uh, or as far as anybody wants, I've got time. I just want to be mindful of people's time. I think we're good. Uh, uh, the session will be recorded anyway, so if people need to leave. They uh, feel free to catch the recording when we publish it. All right. So we're just wanting to have some fun. Uh, the Interzone is a podcast that we publish two to three times a month, and we talk with people inside and outside of Microsoft. And I will follow up with a link uh, if you're interested to go learn more about the Interzone. But we wanted to pull out of the heads of your user group uh, managers, leaders, uh, your peers, uh, and just basically welcome to the intro zone. Brett, Matt, Andrew, you've already been here, but let's pretend that you're coming into the intro zone. How are you all? Nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, let's go through a quick round table if they, they don't already know all, all of what you do, starting with Brett. Brett, what do you do? And give us a synopsis of maybe your, your latest project that you've worked on. You know, good grief. Uh, yeah, so I work for a company called Cyrison. Uh, we make plugins for uh, System Center Service Manager, which is an IT service management platform. So for your for your service desk. So um, a lot of the stuff that we're working on at the moment is integration into Teams as well. So we can actually um, pull information directly from IT service management into Teams as well. So we can make comments or, or look up KB articles or take chats that we've been having and taking them directly into an IT service management um framework there as well so starting to yeah integrate into um that collaboration into yeah an it service management platform excellent it sounds mm. like a nice a nice blend of information and actual control which is really nice yeah yeah uh so matt and this is maybe just for me because maybe everybody knows who everybody is but matt enterprise architecture at data do you say data pound three or data star three or data hashtag three. Well, Matt needs to take himself off mute first because he can't <laughs> no. work out how to use a how to use a microphone. Have you used <laughs> Teams before, Matt? <laughs> just 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 putting no, it out. Never, never no. used it before. That's hence the problem. <laughs> ah, it's the, the what is it, the quote of twenty twenty and following closely under twenty twenty one, you're on mute. Um yeah, yep. so uh data three. Um I think the I think the pound is silent. Um <laughs> And so, yeah, I do, I work with customers around a lot of stuff. Um, my background's heavily within the Microsoft SAC. I've been doing it for oh, a lot longer than what I care to mention out loud. Whatever's healthy, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I come from uh, an exchange and identity background back from, you know, MS Mail days. Um, so that, that gives you an idea of how long I've been doing this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, 
but at the moment, I am working on a, uh, a reference architecture for a uh, global manufacturing company around, strangely enough, uh, Defender, for end, uh, Defender for Endpoint, which is the, the next topic that I'm talking about within our user group. Um, so I do a lot of um, M365, M365 security stuff and also Azure. All right. So you're, you're our protector. Let's phrase it around. We and data in this conversation is safe because of Matt. Well, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that you joined yeah. uh, with the Clippy background. The Clippy. I love you know, love you know what? That someone needs to make the uh, the Merlin one. That's I uh, when I saw these come <laughs> out, and there was the blue background which you've got, which I love, and there's the solitaire yeah. one. I was just absolutely heartbroken that there was no Merlin. Oh, but but he's just as good. That's okay. Well, I can, I'm maybe, sure. maybe that team that's providing these background is just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Andrew, as a solution specialist, I know a lot of your focus is around uh, Microsoft Learn training certifications. But uh, what is your role at Subnet and what are some of the things you've been doing recently? Yeah, cool. Uh, so my tenure is a bit, uh, a little under the half of um, my uh, com <laughs> the cohorts here. Um, so I came into the IT space a bit later on in, in my career. So after learning a bit about you know, uh, Windows Server, Windows Client, and all that, um, when Office 365 came around, um, it was kind of pushed to me, "Hey, you should you should learn this." I'm like, oh, "Okay, yeah." So learned the things and then just kept learning. Um, <laughs> so now I'm pretty much just pushing out the the whole concept of getting people to into Office 365 or Microsoft 365, uh, identifying you know, technical debt in spaces, um, highlighting what um, processes can be done better or uh, maybe even automated um, in some instances, um, just overall getting businesses up to speed or up to date, catching up with um, the latest and greatest. Yeah, I think the role, uh, you, just the way that you defined it, is probably one of the more important things for just awareness campaigns where, you know, what do you have? What are you trying to accomplish? You know, let me show you some things you might not have seen. And being able to take that into consideration of what they're actually trying to accomplish, uh, I, I, I would, I'm just guessing is a big part of what you do. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a little information about each of the three of you uh, so that we can kind of drill into some topics. I hope based on what you all know and are fluent on that everybody who's joining the user group today would just get a little more than just what Mark was here to share because I think uh, you know there's there's a lot that you obviously have probably already presented in the past in the user group um, but hope to hit on three topics based on what you guys uh, let me know that you focus on. So starting back with Brett um, you know, with this notion of whether it's got the right acronym, uh, what was your preferred one? The SCCM? SCCM, um, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, whether we use the right acronym or we throw uh, a couple of terrible new brand names at you, uh, I, I think in this day and age, the thing that's the most new is just what do IT departments have to manage? It's on-premises, it's maybe in the cloud, or it's a blend of both. Mm -hmm. And if if you were to kind of put your you know best practices guidance on or the the main thing that people need to consider if they're moving into hybrid or just they're moving into you know taking advantage of some of the new technologies no matter where they're deployed, what do you tell people these days when it comes to the SCC emishness of the world that you live in that they can kind of glean no matter how they're deployed? Yeah, so so system center as a whole um, is is really. Uh, you know, I'm I'm biased towards System Center. I love it. Um, it's where I started my career as, as in SMS and then SCCM and now Endpoint Manager. Um, so bring all of the System Center um, pieces together to actually build out process. And you know, for years, ITIL and IT Service Management and so forth have been talking about uh, continuous improvement and having a service catalog that. Um, IT can show that the service that they're providing their business and everyone's kind of fobbed it off and haven't really put much um, investment into their service catalog or know what they actually do from IT as a service uh, with inside a business. 
And now that we're moving to these sort of hybrid environments, we we have um, so many new ways of being able to do business. And I think especially over the last two years that all of a sudden we had that snap change of, okay, everyone's, the way we work and the way we communicate is going to change fundamentally now and for forever. It's important to start with good process, um, know what our policies are from a government and um, um, restrictions sort of perspective of what we have to report. Um, but then what are our processes? How does a new user come on board? How do we offboard somebody? How do we promote someone's security? Um, and especially with a lot of government uh, departments at the moment, there's this big push of what we uh, here in Australia call the essential eight. So we have our cybersecurity division um, and they've got eight key metrics to be able to hit to be able to make sure that your uh, organization is secure so things like no local admin passwords and so forth so knowing what our policies are uh, that we need to get to what our processes are for um, providing that service to our customers um, and then actually implementing it and picking the right technology for that process but uh, a lot of companies, unfortunately, are putting the, the the product before the process and then having to shoehorn things into those products. We've got a lot of choice nowadays, but if we don't know what our processes are, we don't know what it is that we're actually servicing our customers with, we can't make good educated decisions um, into whatever product we're going to put things behind. So organizations really focusing on what that process should be uh, with inside an organization, I think is really important. So, Matt, if off the back of that, there is this notion of you got a plan, you got to know your processes and what the business requires so that you can, before you actually go and push some dials and buttons to get things configured, there's also the content side of things. And I don't just mean documents because I'm the SharePoint guy, but mail and mailboxes, calendar, just getting somebody to a new space like the cloud. I know you had a, a recent win where you moved a lot of mailboxes for the government, and I can let you explain that a little bit more. Yeah. I'd love to hear that one use case in 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 that example, but I'm also maybe just for the broader user group interest if they're not a government entity, that notion of what should people think about when they move to the cloud or if they're already invested in the cloud, taking advantage of that next workload. What does that mean from maybe the example that you can share, but also that broader notion of migrating content, the, the to-dos and the not to-dos? Yeah, I, I think... The, probably the most important thing and like it's really just remove the technology from the equation and I know that sounds a, like a weird thing to say when we're talking about a, a technology project like it doesn't matter whether you're trying to mailbox uh, migrate you know one mailbox or you know a hundred thousand mailbox or whether you're trying to move you know your on-prem SharePoint farm into SharePoint online or, or, or whatever the case may be you've got mm -hmm. to answer the what am I actually trying to get out of this at the end? So what's the business trying to get out of it? Not the technology. If, if you're driving down that, oh, we're doing this because it's shiny or we're doing this because we need, you know, we, we need to get the, the new latest and greatest whatever, that project will fail. Like absolutely 100% guarantee it will fail. Um, you need to really be clear on what you're out comes are going to be what do i actually need to get out of this project now that also helps with you know all the requirements gathering to begin with and you know I, I think um there's that fine line between over architecting and under architecting things and when when i'm not going to jump too far into you know the whole agile mindset but you know you need to get that right fit for getting all of your business requirements done so that you've got a really clear idea of what success looks like, what done looks like, and everything that goes along the way. And as you do that, your project kind of just falls in place. Um, the other thing that can't be understated is organizational change management. Like, and, and it is absolutely key. So one of the things that we did with, um, with government, um, so the the project specifically was around migrating uh, all of SA Gov's um, mailboxes from an on-prem private cloud Exchange 2013 um, environment to Exchange Online. So that was 28 
agencies, which have effectively 28 business units. Every single one of them has different business requirements, different outcomes, different drivers, different everything. Um, now, we it, it was not a, a simple project. In fact, actually, it was a simple project. It was a really, really simple project from a technology point of view. Like, it, it's just, here's the PowerShell scripts. Here's the things I need to do. Here's the times I'm going to do it. Done. The thing that was actually complicated and the thing that made it really successful um, was the change management. We had um, we had sessions run with executive assistants so that they knew what to expect on the day of migration. So when their exec came to them and went, the whole thing's ruined and I can't do anything or they can't get access to it because of, of every migration I've done, the one person you don't want to make mad is an EA. Like mm -hmm. it, you don't make them... <laughs> don't put them in a pilot and don't make them angry. Just make sure the white glove service, the execs are usually fine. It's the, their, their PA or EA that you just want to make sure it has the smoothest ride possible. Um, and then we'd run sessions with um, each individual agency service desk. So they know, knew what kind of calls to expect. We'd give them FAQs. We'd give them, you know, lesson, our lessons learned from the field. What did we see in pilot? What did, how did we troubleshoot all these things that we saw? What are the repeatable things that you can do here? Um, and then, uh, then also just creating, you know, a one pager for users. You're going to be migrated on date X. And again, it doesn't matter what the workload is. Um, if there's a user impact, here's what's going to happen. Here's the impact. Here's what you need to do. If you've got a problem, call this person and don't make it a big, like it, it's not war and peace and don't expect even, mm -hmm. even in a technical, uh, an organization that's, got really high technical literacy, don't assume that that user knows that product as well as you do because they, I mean, they may have the intelligence or the ability to, but it's not their day-to-day -day job. They just want their email to work or they want to be able to get access to their um, their data in, in SharePoint or they want to be able to make a phone call in Teams or, you know, they want to be able to do whatever the case may be. And if you're interrupting that flow, then you need to be able to give them something to ease that, that transition along. So I think those are the things that really um, are the most important thing. And um, I, I, I've said it to a lot of people in the past, it's if you're still having conversations with, with customers, clients, and I do mean internal as well as you know, external facing, if you're having conversations about technology, you're actually having the wrong conversation because you need to be having the business conversation. What does the business want to get out of this? What does success look like for the business and for the end users? I, I can see the through line between what Brett was talking about, where yeah. if you don't plan that you're yeah. screwed when it comes to the process, <laughs> if you yeah. don't do any requirements gathering, you know, then you're kind of screwed if you don't really put the right plan together. The yeah. thing I really like, and I've heard it from a number of consultants more recently and, and from one of our, uh, you know, folks that, that I've uh, talked to a couple of times on the podcast, is that notion of focused on outcomes. You're, mm. you're right about the, the don't, you know, pay mm. attention to the shiny object, learn about it, but, you know, don't yeah. jump to it. But do the right requirements gathering with the right outcomes. And where I think it might lead into what I'd like to ask Andrew is, effective communications throughout. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and if in that part that maybe, Andrew, where you focus a lot on the change management aspects, uh, obviously that comes with good communication. You, you need to know what you're talking about and they need to understand what you're talking about. Um, but I wanted to ask kind of a two-part, a little more pointed question, uh, just to get your uh, sense of what you uh, have worked a lot with and kind of what bubbles up as something that you really like. Uh, so the question is, what is an application that everybody knows about that is your favorite app? And what is another app that nobody knows about that you think everybody should know about? Um, look, the first part, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, everyone knows Microsoft Teams by now uh, in the past year of its uh, exponential growth. Uh, so I think I saw it was 250 million active yeah. users daily. Um, so with the, that tool to make us all connected, um, it was really helpful during, well, we had less impact being in South Australia compared to the Eastern Seaboard. Um, yeah. But for those that needed to work from home, it was um, it was critical to get them up and running um, with the Teams platform uh, so to keep their meetings going and 
introducing uh, collaboration at a very uh, expedited rate. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, 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 what was the thing that was, you know, besides just turn your video on and chat, you know, not that you have to have your video on, but what was kind of the, the hardest thing to implement it maybe at scale for people to learn about Microsoft Teams? Um, just overall, I guess, um, getting out there that this is what we need to do now. Um, we've got a very shortened um, frame of time to get everyone on board and mm -hmm. across, I guess, the, the basics of the product. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it was already after the fact, so we already had clients sent home um, to work, so they were calling in and we were just haphazardly kind of just getting them across <laughs> the line so that they can get on with their work. Um, so there was pretty much no change management, no user adoption yeah. to make it happen as soon as possible. Uh, and I guess over the over the year with easing restrictions and going back in again for lockdowns, uh, I guess at this stage, I think everyone is either across the product itself and how, how to use it. Um, but there's still heaps of stuff um, in Teams and what it can do that they probably haven't been shown. Um, it's just that it it's a means to get everyone working um, as a tool now. Um, yeah, so in terms of something that not many know, um, from a, a non-IT pro point of view, uh, there'd be a lot in the 365 stack that um, isn't really talked about. So everyone would think, oh, Office 365, it's, you know, it's, off, it's Outlook, it's Word and all that, but um, some may travel into the little waffle menu with the nine dots and they'll go, what is all this? <laughs> uh, um, I think a really good one would be Power Automate or formerly known as Flow, um, just in what it can do in between all your different apps and services in, uh, in 365. So being able to automate all sorts of just day-to-day -day menial tasks like, oh, you've received an email, um, you know, you can file it for you, you can, you can take the attachment, store it somewhere else so that you can get to it later, so that you've got it filed nicely or however you like. Um, just cutting down just your the time spent manually doing those tasks um, is, is pretty uh, valuable. And then the further integrations into like Power Apps and your, the rest of the Power Platform, um, your power virtual agents as well, just uh, giving the, the no code, low code to just anyone to play with these tools because um, they're all included to a degree in your licensing um, mm -hmm. when you've got. So uh, I would suggest have a play, um, maybe not in production, but where, where possible. <laughs> oh, have a play. Chicken, come on, no, <laughs> do it. Just commit to prod. <laughs> Are we not bold? Nobody needs Adelaide? to know that. <laughs> It's Friday, it's 4 p.m. Just write it to prod, it'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? I know there's some other partner apps that um, that uh, integrate into Teams that I um, I don't think many people are aware of that are, I think are, are, are very useful. I think one of them is, is a product that we make called Ticket. Um, and it's a really, really small service management uh, ticketing system for, for people that don't want a full-blown uh, IT service management system, and it's fully Teams based, um, so it's completely um, built into Teams. Uh, and also here in South Australia, another company that um, have a Teams app that I think is really, really innovative is uh, Team Gauge, uh, and it's a HR uh, survey um, type solution. So you can start to get feedback from your end users and and your um, staff about how they're feeling about the organization and, and that general sort of HR feedback. And it was sort of ahead of its time because, you know, most people are like, oh, no, I like face-to-face -face type meetings with people and so forth and so on. Then all of a sudden, you know, the last two years hit and everyone's like, oh, actually, this works really well. Um, and it's a great way to be able to get that uh, anonymous feedback as well as um, direct feedback um, up into HR and, and really see how people are feeling about the organization and it's all directly built into Teams. So again, you can have those discussions and then move straight into, you know, how do we fix this from a HR and a company perspective? So if you haven't checked out Team Gauge, definitely check them out. They're Adelaide based and uh, yeah, really, really good product. Um, great way of being able to get that feedback back into your organization. I think on that topic, like we, we've come out, well, 
we're, we're coming out and in and out and in of, of global <laughs> pandemics and lockdowns and everything else. Like obviously the state in you know New South Wales at the moment is is not great. Um, but the thing that like we've been in except lucky in in Adelaide in terms of lockdown but um you know the, that that just general feeling of isolation of, of the, mm. the the pandemic side and not actually having as much human contact and I say this as a raging introvert who just loved being in lockdown <laughs> well I loved it for about the first two weeks and then afterwards I went I mind going out with my mates for a beer that'd be I'm great slightly <laughs> um, extroverted every once in a while but yeah I kind of can't do that so it, it, but there's there's that component of it and i think i think when you mm. um you know psychology is one of my hobbies so i think when you when you look at it when people start getting very insular in their thought and they can't express that to a co-worker or or you know someone face to face it actually you start to fester on those things and you know being able to actually have those conversations as well and the thing that we've seen um more than anything and, and mark you said it like you know teams turn your video on like I, I think even if you're in you know a hoodie and a pair of tracksuit pants turn your video on like i i i i I know that, I mean, I don't have bad hair days because you know there's not much left to be bad anymore. <laughs> but um I think having video on and and all of this the great stuff that has come around with um the 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 absolute reliance on video conferencing applications whether that be you know teams or facetime or um or whatsapp or signal or you know um zoom everything like that has really helped people keep connected and that bigger story around unified comms has really hit home in a lot of organizations like before it was a yeah, yeah you know we want to use you see because telephony is cheaper not mm -hmm. because of video like that no one well mm -hmm. people cared but it was less of a an important part um and you know remote work now and um talent acquisition as well like if you think about it the globe is now your oyster for talent acquisition mm -hmm. because remote working is the new normal so it, it starts making things a lot more interesting um uh, across those 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 things. So all of these applications like Viva and TeamGage and stuff like that, that actually allows you to see how people are doing in a good way, not in a, you know, creepy big brother um, privacy violation way <laughs> is really, really great because HR having that information is not a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing because then they can start doing things like initiatives around things like Viva with Headspace and curating content to be able to say, hey, look, we've actually noticed that people aren't doing great at the moment. Here's some things that you might want to try. You know, there's the, mm -hmm. these headspace things and, you know, you, we know you can't go outside, but you can a bit. So going for a walk or doing this or, you know, get the dog out or, you know, mm -hmm. go pat the cat or something or say hello to your neighbor or well, don't say hello to your neighbor, but, you know, somewhat, <laughs> something like that is, hello, is incredibly important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, I think that what we've seen over the last years has been not just an evolution in the way we work, but the way that we're delivering technology as well um, and the consumption of that technology. I don't think anyone expected people to go from, um, you know, zero to, you know, a, 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 like, I, I at the time had two weeks to get a lot of people working from home. Um, and I mean a lot, I mean like 80,000 people working from home. Um, so it was, it was just an incredible uplift in how we've had to do this. And I think IT and, um, the platforms that are available to us have just really come on in leaps and bounds. And it's just breathtaking to see not just what's been able to be happen, but how the longevity of that is actually going to play out in terms of how we work now. Mm. Yeah, I, mm. I hope it sticks to some degree, you know, partially because yeah. I, I think there's a little bit of introvert in everybody and it's nice mm. to just choose, hey, I don't want to go into the office, but I do have things to do and I have people yeah. to meet and it's mm. going to be a great experience. I also really like what you said in the notion of, you know, that the, the phrase, the world is flat mm. and there's a lot of talent that doesn't have to live or move or relocate mm. uh, almost to the betterment of your company because now you've got representation in a new city or in a new state or whatever that might be. I, I really like that. And back to Andrew, just what you mentioned around Power Automate, the tools, not just for IT, but even for end users, 
I, I will be very clear. I, I was a little bit afraid of Flow at first. Uh, I never really dabbled in workflow in SharePoint to any degree. So I just kind of thought the old mental model of workflow was not for me. I, to take advantage of somebody deployed it, but not to build it. But I remember the first flow that I built because somebody sent me a link to the recipe that said, you have a document in OneDrive and you want to post to Teams. Now we can do it a little bit more elegantly with a new feature. But that that flow is a really easy one for me to plug in. Yep, I want it in my OneDrive and I want it to post you know, with this message or whatever. And then to use that as something I could then drop from a drop down, um, I would agree. It's kind of a hidden tool and the hidden part of it, which I, I know you probably share a lot with your uh, you know, in the training session or when people reference it is, it is not a hard tool anymore. It's not for everybody, but it bleeds into that, I can do it, the no code, low code, almost no code. Uh, so I commend you for bringing that one up because I think that probably could be a scary one for people to kind of stare at. But the what you can do with Power Automate or if you knew it in Flow uh, has a lot of capabilities. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. I, I I think a lot on that as well, and I'll touch back onto what some of the stuff Brett was saying around process. And I think a takeaway from that is um, that I'll, I'll put this a little bit more delicately than what I usually do to my customers. Even is you got to remember that a crap process, if you automate it, is just a crap process automated. <laughs> it, it doesn't actually it doesn't fix the problem. Just because you've put automation around it, it kind of ties back into what I was saying around get your requirements right. But a crap process. Automated is still a crap process. It doesn't fix the problem. So I have one. I problem. want to ask Brett. Is that true? I thought Intune had an, an a crap fixer uh, <laughs> filter where it would it would take a crap not process. Not so much. And, not so much. Not yet. So maybe much. maybe next version. Maybe. Okay. Ah crap. Oh, I mean sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, from an interzone perspective, thank you all for sharing. Uh, always great. Obviously for me, just. The thing I love about the interzone is I get to hear about things that I usually don't know much about or am reminded that, yes, that is uh, actually a valid way to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, but my last pitch on the interzone, besides that you just heard from three of your peers locally, uh, is that the interzone covers a ton of different topics uh, and is intended to be worldly. So we've had a show from Canada. Uh, I've traveled in the past and, and brought back a couple interviews. These days, we're doing everything over Teams, but we try to cover a lot of topics, a lot of different people. Uh, if you have a topic in mind that you'd like to hear about, please don't hesitate to drop me that information. But check out The Interzone at aka.ms slash The Interzone. Uh, but anyway, back to you all. I, I really do appreciate uh, being invited and, and, of course, fun to do a little Interzone in person. Nice. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Thanks Mark. So much. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's well over well over time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hope that. everyone that was was on the call, uh, yeah, really got something out of it. Uh, we've recorded this, so we're going to put it up on YouTube as well on our, our YouTube okay. channel. Um, and we're over to Matt next month. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no? MDE next month. So um, that's gonna. It's not quite a zero to hero, but it's gonna be what to look what to look for to begin with how to get yourself onboarded, um, and just some intros of what MDE actually is. So, um, and I'll, I'll give you a big spoiler, it's not an antivirus product. So if you're going in thinking it's just Windows Defender on steroids, mostly wrong. It's, 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 it's not AV. And we'll go into why and what it can do and some of the cool stuff that it can scare the living bejesus out of you with um, <laughs> is um, is pretty impressive. And uh, I, I'll also touch on that Essential 8 stuff because the first two things in the Essential 8 is basically patch your crap, like patch your apps, patch your OS. That's one and two. So, yeah, it'll it'll help you with that. And it'll also, if you're, if you're the security guy and you've got um, the Intune guy, <laughs> you can point at him and go, why isn't this patched? And I <laughs> can't, I can't. Well, I mean, they can try and run away from you, but probably not going to get too far. I have a short distance of horses. Uh, people are faster than horses and all that sort of stuff. But... <laughs> Anything from you, Andrew? No. Uh, I, again, I'd like to thank Mark for taking his time out um, and for dealing with me poking him uh, <laughs> for the past couple of months just to try and lock something in uh, it is it is a little um, unfortunate that chris couldn't join us um but uh yeah i'd, I'd 
been listening to the show for quite a while and uh, yeah, it's, it's some good fun. Good. Well, I'm, I I don't mean I don't mind being poked and prodded, especially if it's technical from Australia. That's that's better. Uh, but I appreciate the invite and sorry that Chris couldn't make it uh, just a little fluctuation towards the end. He's here in spirit. I don't know if you saw him. He's right. He just went over the hill right when we started recording. So wait, wait. And then he just disappeared. Um, but like I had mentioned, the one question that we had around Viva pricing, this is the best link I could find. Obviously, there's not uh, everything in market right now, so not all the licensing has been provided. There was some information from our Inspire uh, uh, show not a couple weeks ago. So if you really want to get current on Viva from a partner perspective or a release perspective, they had some good information around price, pricing. Uh, and availability. There was a session that my manager Seth Patton did. So just type in in Microsoft Inspire Viva, and you'll you'll find that session. Um, but anyway, this this one is usually kept up pretty pretty to date. So uh, Viva pricing. Hopefully, it's 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 something that you can digest, and uh, I think very worth it uh, if you start playing around with it. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. And we'll see you all next month. Yep. Right. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Stop that recording.